Okay, so covering my name Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. After 10 earthquakes in the last 24 hours have struck uh, in central Italy, near, not too far from Rome, of course. Rome being affected by these earthquakes. Everything from a 5.6 all the way down to a 4.0 and above. 10 earthquakes again have rattled. Uh, central Italy. Now, what's interesting in this, <clears throat> this uh, we have a new report coming out this morning on Sputnik. Dozens feared dead after massive avalanche hits. Italian hotel uh, uh, is being reported. Uh, 30 people are supposedly dead after this avalanche has hit the hotel. I was looking at uh, Gran uh, Sasso d'Italy, that is where the hotel is located at. And of course, it's just to the uh, east of where the epicenter was from the earthquake. So no doubt the reason for the landslide is probably a lot to do with this earthquake that just struck here uh, on your map, as you can see here. The earthquake was, I think, just, just a little bit north, uh, uh, northwest of that location. Uh, but as a result, it's caused an avalanche and 30 people have lost their lives. Uh, during that particular earthquake. Another thing that has happened that just broke out a few moments ago, the Ukrainian parliament has adopted laws allowing U.S. troops to join drills on Ukrainian territory. And that in itself is pretty major. Uh, you can see John McCain uh, uh, and Senator Graham both here pictured with Poroshenko. We know McCain was there before the coup took place, during the, or excuse me, during the time of the coup. Uh, letting the people know that they had their backs. That was another kind of dead giveaway that the United States uh, was per certainly backing the toppling of uh, Yanukovych, the former, um, the former prime minister, <clears throat> excuse me, former president of uh, Ukraine. And now Petro Poroshenko has taken his place. There is some uh, belief that Petro Poroshenko is actually a CIA operative to begin with working uh, in and amongst uh, the Ukrainian people, and that's the reason why he was brought into power. Uh, <clears throat> one thing I want to share with you as well that's just very concerning to me, and uh, maybe I can jump over here to Twitter and show you some of this information so you understand where I'm coming from, uh, and that is there is so much of a buildup of troops around Russia's border, and I want to see if I can get down here to one of our good friends there on already happened and what he speaks about this uh, because, uh, or not speaks, but showing the different troop movements that are happening. Uh, Mikhail is another one, uh, does an uh, outstanding job, also War Monitor, also picks up a lot of the information that, that is going on. Um, but already happened on his channel here, he also has a Facebook page, uh, you might want to check it out, follow along with the information that he reports. <clears throat> been clearly showing a major buildup uh, of U.S. forces in different places uh, around Russia. Uh, and, of course, some of these are a couple of days old. Also, Italy, he was just recently showing howitzers being moved around over in Italy. Here's what I wanted to bring out here. The U.S. F-35B's Lightning uh, II with its Marine Fighter Attack Squadron have, have arrived in uh, Awakuni, Awakuni, Japan. Uh, we also know that <clears throat> he reported the other day that a, that a submarine, uh, U.S. Uh, to, uh, Topeka, uh, arrived in Japan as well. Uh, we see that we also have, um, uh, let me drop down a little further in <clears throat> things that he's put out. You have the U.S. troops that landed uh, in, uh, this one here is in Ukraine. Uh, you have the ones that landed in Norway, 200 or 300 plus Marines that landed in Norway. And <clears throat> it's, it's almost as if something is preparing, something is in preparation. We already know about all the troops that have come into Poland. Uh, nearly 2,000 heavy, heavy fighting equipment that came into Europe that went straight to Poland, tanks, uh, the Bradleys, the, the howitzers. Uh, everything you can think of. The Chinese also test firing the DF-21C ballistic missiles. Um, there's just an enormous movement around Russia's borders. And there, there has came out a report, and I cannot uh, authenticate this report as of yet. I'm working on it. I'll try to be able to authenticate it later the, uh, today if possible. 
But there is a report that uh, President-elect Donald Trump has sent an emergency message to President Putin that um, he is concerned for his own life in this transition. But he has assured President Putin if he makes it past this transition, uh, he will deal with issues that are going on. Um, we know there's a lot of reports coming out of the United States right now that there's uh, plans to try to disrupt the, uh, the inauguration. And uh, we just, there's, a, there's a lot of things happening that are not good. And we're going to try to keep an eye on what's going on. It is concerning to, to see that report that I saw. Again, I can, it's alleged at this point. I will try to follow up on it and see if I can confirm this information. Um, and also in the report, it did mention that uh, Donald Trump knows that there is a possibility of a strike on Russia's northern border. Um, again, I have no way to confirm that at this point. Uh, all we can do is sit back, look. I'm, I'm watching the things that are happening. This latest thing with the Ukrainian parliament approving uh, military, being able to do drills with Ukraine, kind of lets me know that there's something up. Uh, if, if the Ukrainian parliament has adopted a law allowing admission of foreign troops for drills, then that means they're fixing to move a huge amount of troops into their country for drills. Now, that's, that a lot of times is more than just a drill. As uh, President Putin said in his uh, documentary, uh, Crimea, The Way Home, once uh, he revealed that the United States and their allies, when they entered into the Black Sea, it was under the auspice of a drill. But in reality, it almost went to a nuclear war. Um, it's just very concerning to me. And I think that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was trying to tip off President Putin what was going on when it was uh, released in uh, Russia Dialogue that the conversation that was held between Putin and President, uh, uh, excuse me, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu, that Israel was intending an invasion into Damascus area in southern Syria there, that he was letting him know in retaliation to what Obama had done, that they were about to invade Syria. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the case is going to be. I don't know how it's going to play out, but we'll be keeping you up to date as we can find out more about this information. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.